This seismic profile comes from offshore Nigeria, from the floor of the Eastern Atlantic. And we're going to have a go at interpreting it very quickly. We'll describe the seismic very simply, and then we're going to use a combination of stratigraphy and structure to build an interpretation. And central to this is the application of the regional concept. I'll explain what that is when we get there. Now, the vertical scale on this is in uh, seismic two-way time, which you can see down the left-hand side. And along the top of the screen, you can see the horizontal scale, which is in kilometers. So the profile as a whole is about 20 kilometers across. Because we're building a structural interpretation, it's really important to try and display the profile with minimal vertical exaggeration, which is what we've got here. We've estimated the vertical scale using the two-way time and an assumption for seismic velocity. If we try to build our structural interpretation with significant vertical exaggeration, then we're liable to run into significant difficulties. OK, well, let's have a look at the profile. The deeper part, below that really prominent high amplitude reflector, has low frequency, pretty strong amplitude, but the reflector continuity is pretty poor. Let's step up through the profile to this area here. So this is a really pale zone, isn't it? It's got low frequency, pretty patchy amplitudes. Pretty much most of the profile's got very low amplitude, which is why it looks almost transparent. And the reflector continuity, such as it is, is pretty poor. So let's come up to the top part of the profile, up to the seabed, which is the top of the image. So that's got really high frequency content, good strong amplitudes, and by and large, good continuity of reflectors across the profile. But there are some exceptions to this good continuity rule, and they're here, where the seismic image is dimmed. And this represents challenges of imaging, which are likely to be due to structural complexity in these areas, or these could be. So what do these three broad layers in the seismic represent? Well, this is the standard interpretation for the region. So we have a sedimentary package, or two sedimentary packages. The lower half is dominated by mud rocks, the upper part dominated by turbidite sandstone packages. And these rest on oceanic crust. So that big booming reflector at the top of what we label oceanic crust is indeed the top of the oceanic basement. So we're going to concentrate on the upper part, this turbiditic package, where we'll try and understand the broad stratigraphic style and the structure. So when building interpretations, I'll always try and start at the top of the profile and work down the reason for starting at the top is that the structural complexity is likely to be low and the seismic imaging is likely to be higher quality. So we could pick the seabed. That's simple enough. Let's pick another reflector a little bit further down. And another one. OK, so we can pick out some simple stratigraphy. But now... As we try and step further down, the continuity of reflectors becomes more complicated because presumably the geology is getting more complicated with depth. And we can pick out this problem by identifying this reflector here. And as we run up to the right-hand side, well, it goes into that zone of poor imaging. So there'll be greater uncertainty in trying to trace the reflector across the image as a whole. So I'm going to break the problem up into components. Let's pick a reflector here, which is continuous, and I'm not going to push it further across the profile. And we can pick another reflector here. OK, let's look at these in turn. And I'm going to apply the regional concept. You can find out more about the regional concept uh, in a video of the same name elsewhere on the ShearZone channel. OK, so this is the regional for that uh, tan-coloured horizon. And zoom in. So regional is shorthand for regional elevation and orientation. And essentially it's a reference line, the long wavelength of the geometry of this stratigraphic horizon, away from the structure of interest. And we want to look at the structure of interest with reference to its regional. 
and we can see here that the horizon is elevated locally above its regional. And from this we can deduce that the structure concerned is contractional. Let's step back. Now let's look deeper in the profile and we can see that the bottom of the turbulite section is more or less undisrupted in terms of its uh, overall geometry. It's not elevated, it's a reasonably smooth line across the profile. So let's strip the seismic away and if the fold structure in the tan horizon is contractional, we would expect fault structures to be thrusts and what's more, they would dip beneath the elevated area so that the structure would be uplifted in the hanging wall to thrusts. It's a really simple concept. And we can come back to the seismic and use this inference as a style guide to inform our interpretations of faults on the image, which is what we'll do in a minute. Well, let's step back and look at the other structure. And there's the horizon pick that we used. Let's construct its regional through here. OK, and again, let's uh, look at the base. There is the lower part of the profile. And we can see that the MOVE horizon is elevated as above its regional. Let's come back to a clean image without the seismic. And we can see the MOVE horizon is elevated above its regional. And therefore, we would infer the presence of thrust faults beneath this zone. And again, we can use this as a style guide when we come to interpret the seismic image itself. Right, let's step back. So, by applying the regional concept, we deduce that these structures on the profile are contractional folds and that faults associated with them will be thrust faults. Right, so now let's build an interpretation. We can put back on our reflectors we picked so far. And I'm going to start here by putting on that tan horizon across the profile. Let's concentrate on this left-hand side and put on the base of the package of turbidites. And now we're going to try and pick another horizon into the fold structure. We can pick it in from the left-hand side and its continuity is disrupted by something, presumably a fault. Well, now I'm going to step across the structure over here and put it on on the other side. In finding the position of the blue on the right-hand side of the image, I've simply measured up from the base of the stratigraphy, from the brown horizon at the bottom. And we can complete it by picking across the top. This time, I've hung down from the tan horizon. Now, I'm going to interpret the faults. Well, that's pretty straightforward where the blue horizon is picked up, but deeper in the core of the structure in here, it's more ambiguous. Don't treat what I'm about to show you as definitive. Rather, it's one of a series of permissible fault geometries, something like this. OK, let's move now to the right hand side. And let's keep picking the blue horizon as far as we feel confident. And where I've terminated it is where perhaps it's offset by a fault. Now, remember the way in which we've identified the continuity of the blue horizon and correlated it through the left-hand fold is by measuring up from the brown base of the turbidites. Well, we can do the same on the right-hand side of the image and find the elevation for the blue horizon and then trace it back into the fold structure like this. So in other words, we're using areas of good imagery and working from these back into the areas of poorer image, more structural complexity. OK, now let's consider the tan horizon. That's its height above the blue in the middle part of the image. We can use that measurement over here and now trace it in across the fold structure. And finally, we can just add some faults. We need to show the continuity of a fault where it's bedding parallel at the base of the structure to allow these things to work kinematically. So I've drawn a floor thrust at the base of the turbidites that links the two fold thrust complexes. The final component, of course, is to put arrows on to show the sense of offset. And you can see they're all contractual structures. But just to emphasize, the interpretation 
of the positions of these thrust faults within the folds is complicated. The imagery is complicated, presumably because the structure is complicated. So my interpretation here is non-unique. OK, now let's move on and interpret the stratigraphic megasequences. And I'm going to start off by identifying the pre-kinematic strata. These are the sedimentary rocks that were there before the deformation began and therefore show long-range stratigraphic consistency and have experienced the full deformation. The long-range stratigraphic consistency is represented by the preservation of stratigraphic thickness for example, the interval between the tan and the blue horizon in here. So this was a more or less layer cake stratigraphy before the deformation began. Of course, this was an assumption we used in building our interpretation. So the labels of the mega sequences are not defined. They are simply consistent with the structural interpretation we're building. Moving on, the next package we're going to identify at the top is the post-kinematic strata. These show no deformation and simply drape across the structures. And that leaves an interval in the middle which is synkinematic. And in this package the deformation decreases upwards or should do. So let's go and check that out. We're going to check various parts of the profile and look for growth. In other words, the evidence that the synkinematic package is indeed Synchinematic. So let's start over here on the left. The synchinematic package is between the tan and the green horizon in here. We can see that the thickness of that package varies across the fold. It's thin on top, thick away, which is fine. And we can see that the synchinematic strata in here, the dips decrease upwards, and indeed there's local onlap of some of the strata onto slightly older parts of the synchinematic succession. So that's fine. Let's move now to the other side of the fold in here. Do the same thing again. Again, we can recognize the thickness variation in the package, thin on top of the fold, thickening away. And we can see that the dips decrease upwards again through the synchinematic package. You might also pick out very subtle onlaps in there as well. Now let's move to the front of the next fold structure. Zoom in again. We can see, as ever, that the stratigraphic package is thin on top of the fold, thicker off. And we can see that the synchromatic strata in here show this rather nice decreasing dip up through that fold. And I'll leave the right-hand side of the fold structure for you to do yourself. So let's step back and here's our full interpretation. I always think it's worth annotating the image as you go because the act of annotation encourages you to look for evidence to support or to falsify your interpretation as you go. So let's come back finally to think about these complex structures. And I just want to emphasize that the interpretations I've built here are non-unique and that other versions are permissible. This seismic profile, and specifically the left-hand fold structure we've got on screen at the moment, uh, were used for an interpretation experiment by a group of experts at a conference on deep water fold thrust systems. The results of this interpretation experiment were published in the Journal of Structural Geology in 2011 by Torfeller and Bond, and it's really worth checking out the paper to see the range of uh, interpretations that a group of experts made. And to really emphasize the fact that the interpretation of complex structures should be retreated as an exercise in managing uncertainty rather than trying to be too definitive about a single interpretation. This video is one of a number that you can find on the Shear Zone channel that look at the interpretation of seismic imagery. And you can find other videos that introduce ideas about the structure of fold and thrust belts, including those formed under deep water settings like this.